Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Glenn and this is episode 10 of the Oswan painting series. In this episode I'm painting the blowfly. If you're new to miniature painting I hope you'll find this video interesting and helpful. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below. As always let's see how I painted this fierce creature with wings. Let's begin. First I remove all the mold lines using a hobby knife or file. I also sharpened the stingers as they had some kind of blob at the very tip. This was done with a hobby knife. Next I wash and clean the model in soapy water, then rinse it in clean water and let it dry. Then I prime the model white using an airbrush. This can also be applied by using a can of white primer. Now we all sit and good to go. I began the painting process with a coat of holy white experimenting to see how it turned out. However, I believe this step can be skipped as it doesn't significantly affect the following colors. Next I prepare hive dweller purple, periwinkle purple and plasmatic balls, which I thinned down with speed paint medium in a ratio of two parts color to one part medium. I apply these colors randomly on the three pairs of stingers and on the thorax I use only the purple colors. As usual I imagine the light source coming directly from above. So in this case more paint is applied to the less exposed areas of the model while thin coats are used on the exposed areas. I continue on the stingers. I aim for a thinner coat on the top of the stingers and figure on the underside. For the stingers tips I use hive dweller purple to achieve an almost black appearance, applying multiple layers throughout this tutorial. Continuing over the back and the head I use the same method adding thin layers of the colors. In this step I also incorporate battleship gray. After the speed paint dries, I enhance the saturation on the thorax and the less exposed areas, including the head.
Periwinkle purple is applied to the less exposed carapace, while battleship grey is used on the exposed areas. For the wings leading edge, I use periwinkle purple mixed with a bit of hive dweller purple. Moving to the abdomen, I repeat the previous method. Applying the colors randomly. I apply periwinkle purple to the backside of the carapace, aiming for a darker appearance on the lower part. On the wings I apply a thin coat of a mix consisting of two parts pellet bone and one part speed paint medium. Once the speed paint has dried, I will add another layer of this mix to the wings. While it dries, I continue on the abdomen using Moon Lake Coral. Once that's applied, I blend in fire giant orange. If the paint bleeds, I rinse the brush, wipe off the water and soak up the excess paint. I apply more saturation to the sides of the abdomen and the stingers. And also the carapace.
I apply the second coat of pellet bone and speed paint medium to the wings. I apply a bit of Moon Lake Coral to the thorax to increase saturation and create a more reddish purple tone. Now onto the more time consuming aspect of this paint job. I have prepared periwinkle purple, hive dweller purple and plasmatic bolt on the wet palette, gradually mixing them with white to create lighter tones of colors. I use these tones to layer or highlight most of the model, including the head, the carapace, the back and the abdomen. I keep adding layers of the different mixtures until I think it's bright enough. For the absolute most exposed areas on the model I use pure white. I apply more Hive Dweller Purple to the stingers. To really define and make the rough textures on the model pop, I apply pure colors into the recesses. On the back of the model I dry brush a light color. and continue along the head.
Then I highlight the leading edge of the wings. On the carapace, I use thin lines for highlights. Also on the back side, keeping the lower part of the carapace darker. I continue on the head, building up the layers and highlights. On these small flat surfaces, I add thin lines for highlights. I apply spots of plasmatic bolts and purple on the head to add variation. This is only applied to the rough areas. I use a mix of moonlit coral and white to highlight the size of the forex. Keep in mind I will repaint some of the forex. I will get back to that later. I add more hive dweller purple to the recesses on the sides of the abdomen to define the plates. Afterwards I apply periwinkle purple to the plates to add some variation.
Now we are back to layering and highlighting, just like before. I concentrate on placing the lightest point at the top of the plates, with the most intense point in the middle, following the shape. I only use the purple colors on the plates. I highlight the light area of the stinger as previously and add a layer of Hive Dweller purple to the tip. I painted the opposite side a bit brighter as the abdomen is slightly angled. I would like to create a luminous effect from the abdomen, like a firefly. To achieve this I use Fire Giant Orange and Cellard Yellow. I have also prepared Moonlake Coral that's only for cleanups. I begin with Fire Giant Orange and gradually transition to a lighter mix incorporating Cellard Yellow and White. This helps me build up the glowing effect gradually. Once the transition is rather smooth, I apply a thin layer of Fire Giant Orange to blend everything together. Finally, I use a very light yellow, almost white, as the final highlight to enhance the luminosity.
I cover the noodles in a mix of plasmatic bolts and white. Afterwards, I mix plasmatic bolt and tidal wave to shade the upper part and the back side of the noodles. The speed paint is dry and I highlight the noodles with a mix of plasmatic bolt and white, gradually making them lighter. I pick out some of the small dots with white. Afterwards, I cover them with fire giant orange. and apply a final highlight with a mix of fire giant orange and white. I use charred brown to paint the top half of the branched veins on the wings. Next I paint the other half with a mix of charred brown and baler brown. I highlight the veins with pure baler brown. I follow up with a mix of paler brown and white. The mix with paler brown and white can also be used to clean up the light areas on the wings. I use crack brown as a layer of highlight on the wings. I went over the veins again with charred brown to add variation. I use a mix of baler brown and white to highlight the veins, applying the mix in a more random pattern.
Next I apply the lightest mix as the final highlight. I use Fire Giant Orange, Hardened Leather and Grave Lord Grey as glazes, mixed at a ratio of 2 parts color to 1 part medium. I applied these colors to the veins with a heavier emphasis on the orange. Additionally, I used the orange to cover some of the areas in between the veins. This creates great contrast on the model. I use the light mix of Baylor brown and white for cleanups. This is the area I have chosen to repaint using the same process as before. Starting with a white, follow up by the other colors. I just felt it would look a bit better this way. Let's proceed to painting the base, following my method seen in previous videos. I apply the colors to the base in a random manner, ensuring there is a pleasing contrast between them. This approach adds depth and visual interest to the overall look. For those interested in exploring different base variations, I recommend checking out episode 3. You should be able to find the timestamp in the description of that video. Now I begin to layer or highlight the base using tones of yellow, green and brown. I pick out the raised areas with yellow, gradually making the areas lighter using aerial yellow and white.
I continue highlighting the base using tones of green, brown and yellow. This is also done in a random pattern. I use Kaldor Sky, Warlord Purple and Zoltec Green to paint some of the rough areas on the base. These are also gradually painted lighter. I use different tones of grey to highlight the stone, incorporating tones of brown and green. I covered the arrow on the base with a red color. And go the two laps around the base rim with a black color. I covered the model in a few coats of matte varnish for a matte finish and to protect the paints. Afterwards, I add tufts and plants to the base using superglue. As the final step, I add a touch of horror. Imagine the deep wood, a place you wouldn't dare to tread. The detritus underfoot is a breeding ground for all sorts of grotesque life forms, spores, fungus, and who knows what else. Some of it is so toxic it can dissolve human flesh on contact. To mimic this eerie landscape, I use Yuho glue on the small yellow raised areas. I apply the glue almost directly from the tube, creating strands that resemble the slimy tendrils of something sinister lurking beneath the surface. It might be a bit difficult to see, but it looks great. And with that, let's have a look at the final result. Cursed creatures stand at our gates.
and the Painting Chronicles Brotherhood stands at the ready to face this evil. Join our cause by subscribing and we shall triumph together. Pillar and Path Brothers. Also like and comment.